Hey everyone, Brandon here with Galloway Precision. Today we're going to go over the installation of our reduced power spring kit for the SAR USA CM9 Gen 2 series of pistols. <coughs> if you have an original CM9, it'll also work in it. Uh, biggest change between the CM9 and the CM9 Gen 2 was the changes to the grip, more ergonomic, and uh, better feel. Alright, so tools you're going to need. You need your bench block, you need a 1 16th punch, you need a 332nd punch, your shepherd's crook pick, brass polymer hammer, needle nose pliers. Alright, so here's our reduced power spring kit. You're going to get the firing pin return spring, your trigger return spring, the hammer spring, blocker spring, and then this is the spring that goes on the mag release uh, strut. Okay, so let's go ahead and lock and clear. We are visually and physically empty. So we're going to drop the mag, set it off to the side. We're going to go ahead and strip it down. Now this one is fresh, brand hammer new out of the box. So, <clears throat> you don't need to pull the trigger. Habit. Habit of working on strikers all the time. Alright. <clears throat> so we'll start with the slide. Slide's the easiest thing to do. So go ahead and we'll remove our guide rod. We'll remove our barrel. We'll stand her up down like that. We're going to take our 332nd, and you're going to depress the firing pin while at the same time working that back plate off. Okay? Now you can do that by pulling back on your pick or pushing with your thumb at the same time. Alright, be sure to keep your thumb over it so that the firing pin doesn't take off on you. Okay? So remove the firing pin and spring. When it comes out, your blocker is probably going to pop out just like that. So we're going to take our stock parts. I'll keep them in our little bag of goodies. Always keep your stock parts. All right, so while we have this part, let's talk about the firing pin setup in these pistols real quick. So here's your blocker, here's your pin, here's how it interacts. All right. <clears throat> when the pistol is caught, the way that these blocker systems work, it's completely different from your standard American blocker system because our blockers are constantly in the down position blocking the pin so that it has to be lifted up for the pin to go past. This is the opposite. This is always in the up position, locking it, and when you pull the trigger, the lifter drops, allowing the blocker to move and the firing pin to go past. So it's pretty, pretty neat little design. Not something you see all that often in American firearms. All right, so let's go ahead and did that a little backwards. We'll put on our blocker first. All right, now you'll want this cutout facing to the rear. Okay, go ahead and put your blocker in and put our reduced power firing pin spring on our firing pin. You're going to want to have the blocker about level. All right. And it may take some playing. A little bit of maneuvering and moving around to get the firing pin to go where you want it. Come on. There we go. Also remember, while I'm thinking about it, Flat to flat, okay? Flat side to the flat side of the blocker. Do a little maneuvering. We'll take our back plate. When you put your back plate back on, do make sure that you have the cutout facing the same direction. This cutout with this part of the cutout in the slide. Otherwise, you put it on, you're ejector won't be able to clear it so you'll try and put the slide on and it'll just probably break your ejector so don't do that all right so we're done with our slide and go ahead and put our barrel and guide rod back in and yes we do plan to have uh different rate springs for this pistol we're not going to be doing the guide rod already comes with a nice stainless steel one but we will be doing uh recoil springs all right, so now we're ready to move on to the frame, okay? So we're going to take our bench block, we're going to flip it over to the flat side, and where we're going to start is right here with the safety. And you're going to take your 1 16th, 
and some of these may be a little smaller and uh, you'll need an 039 it just uh, just really depends honestly I'll take our 1 16th now you notice I grabbed my bent one the reason I like using my bent one this was totally accidental I didn't do this on purpose but I was knocking one of these pins out and it bent just right to where it doesn't get in the way of the frame so if you've got a 1 16th that you can sacrifice I say do it it makes life a whole lot easier now if it gets stuck a little bit just take your needle nose this is a very tight fit okay all right so we've got that loose once you've got it loose enough you'll be able to just pull the safety off now if it's a little stuck you can take your small all right so it's not ready to completely come off it I'll give it a couple more little taps and it should just come right on out to get it good and stuck. There we go. Pull that pin out. When she saw me just pull it out by hand at that point and pull that pin out. Now what I like to do so I don't lose it, I'll go ahead and just put it right back in that side of the safety so it starts. All right. So now, a little bit of a tricky part. Now, the reason I didn't use my flat head for this is because, quite honestly, it's easier to do with your needle nose. We've got our sear spring that pops down in and it locks on the safety to keep the sear boat and housing and everything in there, okay? So what you're going to do, you're going to take your needle nose and just grab the end of it and push it over just like that okay you don't even really have to grab it you can literally just do i'll do it again so you can see just use your thumb right here push up and over all right now you can turn the safety up and it'll come right out now i gonna show you something all right this here boat is now loose we can go ahead and remove that we're not going to be doing anything with this so just set it off to the side but before we get to anything else here's your safety setup okay it's actually a pretty brilliant setup you have your spring you got your detent plate and you got this okay so when we go to put it all together we got to make sure that this little plate lines up in that hole because if you don't it'll pop and this is just kind of a pain in the butt to put back together so what i like to do is i'll get it out i'll take my 332nd i'll move the plate to about there and i will very gently set this down okay the reason i do that is once we get close enough to put it back in here with it sitting right in the middle of that we can just push it on through it'll pop into its housing we'll be good to go okay so we got a spare boat out now, we're gonna go ahead and remove the hammers. So line up on your hole on the bench block. We're gonna drive out the hammer pin. Now the way, the hammer's a little bit different in these, okay? Because it's gonna come out as one solid piece. So while that pin's out, I'll set it off to the side. We're ready to take out the uh, trigger pin, which will drive from right to left. Okay. Get it lined up. Smack the camera with the hammer. Now this thing's in here tight, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm gonna move over a little bit so I can there we go. Now that is a tight spring. Now we drive from left to right because, see the swedging on that right side, or correction on that left side, 
is where it goes in and swedges itself in place. That's why this side of the pin sticks out a little bit further than this side, okay? So we're done with that. Now, before we pull... So we've been working with SAR since the beginning of the year. You guys all know this. We work directly with them. I'm going to be at their booth this year at SHOT Show. But the first time I ever took this part, I'm a CZ guy. I love CZs. You'd think I would have known this. It has a CZ style trigger return. So whatever you want to do, keep your hand over this. Because when you pull this out, that trigger return spring is going to take offline. So make sure you have your hand. What I really like to do at this point is I'll grab it with my needle nose and pull that out. And that way you can just grab the spring. Because if you don't, or at least keep your hand over it, this thing is going to take off and you're never going to find it again. Uh, same thing will go when we move over to the vise and I show you how to put the thing in. Um, it is, yeah, <laughs> it will take off on you. So I'm going to put that in our little bag of goodies. And now we are ready to remove the trigger bow, the trigger, and we can pull out our hammer housing. Now, before we get to the hammer spring and put it all back together and do the trigger return spring, we're going to change our mag release uh, strut spring. Now, <clears throat> you can go ahead and push on this and feel it's a pretty stout little spring. Uh, what this does is when it's underneath the trigger bow, uh, it pushes down. Okay, so it gives, keeps the trigger bow lifted where it should be and gives positive action all the way back with the trigger. It also, just this spring, when we first got these in, and uh, I replaced just that spring, it dropped the pull weight by about three quarters of a pound, okay? So the way we're going to do this is you're going to take, keep your finger over your mag release on this side, okay? And you're just going to grab it with your needle nose. I'm going to gently pull it straight up. Don't just go ripping it out. Make sure you keep your finger over this because it is under spring and detent pressure. You'll take your, uh, let's see if we can see. See, so there's your spring and detent. So when we put it together, we'll push it in with our 332nd, and then right when it clears, we pull that out, and it all locks back in place. All right, so what you're going to do, and this is going to be hard to show, if we can't, you'll depress this all the way down. Now, you see right here, Inside of here, there's a little nubbin, I guess you could call it, a little pin. I like to use a magnet to take that out because it is very, very, very tiny. All right, so then you can go ahead and take off the top part of the strut. We'll take off the strut spring, put it in our bag of goodies. We'll put our mag release, new mag release strut spring on. All right. Now, the easiest thing to do once you compress this is I take, it's still sitting on the magnet, and I just line it up, get it in the hole, push it through, and then I drag my magnet down so that it stays in, boom. You can do this with your needle nose or by hand, it's just easier to do with the magnet. So now, we'll put our mag release back in, okay? I'm going to take our strut, put it in, making sure that the foot goes forward, not to the rear. If it goes this way, the magazine can't go into the magwell. Nothing's going to work. So the foot forward. Okay. So we got it in. We're going to take our 332nd. We're going to compress the detent and push down at the same time. And it may take a couple times, and you may have to switch to your smaller one. It just really depends on the tolerances of your gun. This one's just being a jerk, like, ha, ah, watch this. We're going to make him look dumb. It's like a three-hand operation, pretty much. Because you're pushing down and from both sides at the same time. It's like, hey, watch this. Welcome to the Struggle Vision channel. I 
All right. We're in. Okay. It may take you a little finagling, but once it's in there, you'll feel it. It'll pop in place, and you'll know you're in the right place because you can sit here and mash down on this from the center, and it's not going to go anywhere. Your mag release is working. This is going up and down. Okay. Set our frame off to the side for a second. Now, we're going to take 332nd. We're going to drive out our hammer pin. Figure out what I did with my hammer. All right, now this pin, or the stock spring, it's pretty stout. So notice it's already pushing my pin off. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna give it a couple more taps. All right, and you can go ahead and leave it in the housing. Just hold on to the hammer as you pull out your 332nd. All right, so the pin should sit about just like that, okay? Make it easier to put all back together. So now we're going to take our hammer spring off the hammer. That little guy. Put it in there. Take our new hammer spring. Put it on. This arm goes forward. Okay. So we're going to seat the hammer back in the housing. We're going to compress. Now what I like to do is I'll get it started where I can see. Lay it on the bench. And I'll hit from the opposite side on the bench block with my polymer just to kind of get flush. And then we're going to flip over and use your uh, pin punch as a dummy pin. But really, you just got to kind of compress it all together and hold it in place while you drive the pin through, all right? So make sure that our pin is equidistant on both sides and flush. All right, so our hammer housing's ready. We'll give it a little test. We're just gonna make sure nothing bound up and we're ready to start putting it back together. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is take and set up like this so you guys can see. First thing, we're gonna put our trigger in. I'm gonna slide the hammer housing in because it goes just like this, okay? So the trigger bar sits in the hammer housing underneath the lock. All right, so that's all just in there loose. So the first one we're gonna put back is gonna be our hammer pin or our hammer housing pin, okay? Make sure we're equidistant. Pull up and make sure we're seated. Everything's still moving, we're good to go. Now, here's where we're gonna go ahead and pause for a second. I'm gonna get it started, just like that, and we're gonna move over here. Well, actually, I'll do it this way. It can be done this way. It's just kind of a pain in the butt. All right, so when you go to put this in, and take Make sure your short leg's down, long leg's forward. And you're going to put in the short leg first, like so. Long arm in there, okay? The trick is it's gonna wanna jump and move on you. We're holding that in place, because remember, it swedges in from this side, so we're gonna use it as our set pin too, because we want the trigger in a very specific pot, pot spot. All right, we want to be able to see it through a little bit there, okay? So, long arm in, short arm down. And you can push the pin through with your finger, all right? Now double check before we drive it home. I want to double check. Arms in there, arms in there. A little bit of a function check. Trigger bar is moving, hammer is moving. We're good, so we can drive it home. All right, let's take your 332nd. And it's meant to be hard, guys. So you want to get it.
All right. And that's how it should sit. It's going to sit out a little bit further on the left side. Right side needs to be flush. Everything's good to go. So we're ready to go ahead and put the sear boat in and put the rest of the weapon back together. Okay. This part can be a little tricky. You're fighting the hammer spring while putting in that safety at the same time. So cock that back a little bit and you can see right here you've got these indentions that's where it's going to meet up in here you've got little indentions inside the hammer housing that it just marries right up to all right so while you're holding that in place you're going to take your safety and get it started okay Now this is the part that kind of really sucks because you're fighting a couple different springs at the same time to get it all in there. But if you hold it about like I'm showing you, get that going, all right, now you see we're through, okay? You can let go now so that you can uh, Sorry about that. That way, we can go ahead and line up our safety plate. All right, now you see it in there. Let's go ahead and turn it to where it's lined up in the hole. And then you're gonna just shift it in there and see how I did that. It's in its housing. Safety's moving up and down. You should hear click, 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 okay? So that means you can go ahead and take your sear spring, pop it over into place and take our other safety lever we're gonna take our palm oh no i wasn't lined up all the way all right now i am make sure you're lined up and we'll take that and then take our 1 16th and make sure it is flush on the top okay it doesn't need to go all the way through to the bottom just make sure it's flush safety works Trigger pulls, we're ready to put it back together and do a function check. Alright, you need to make sure you've got your locating dots lined up. Alright, you're going to rack it, put safety on, pull the trigger, hammer should not fall. Safety off, pull the trigger, hammer should fall. Rack, you should get your Single action click, hammer falls, double action click. No nothing. All right, so we're good to go. So let's move on over to the vise real quick and uh, do some trigger reads. Now again, this has never been fired straight out of the box. Put the springs in. So let's go over here to the vise real fast, get some trigger pull testing and see what we got. So we'll do 10 double action pulls, average that, and then we will do 10 single action pulls and average that. So right off the bat, first pull is about a pound and a half less. So we've got the average pull weight of the double action down to five pounds, 15 ounces. So let's switch over to single and we'll do 10 of them. Right off the bat, three pounds, seven and a half ounces. Looking good.
one more. So an average single action pull weight of two pounds, 10.9 ounces. All right, so let's head on back over to the bench. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about what the spring kit can do for you. All right, guys, so you saw the pull weight test. I mean, it definitely makes a big change in these guns. This is vastly, vastly, vastly becoming one of my favorite nine millimeters. Um, it shoots well. You saw the satisfying slow-mo I put up the other day of the stainless one we've got. And honestly, it's just a nice little pistol. And with the spring kit in it and no other work done to it, I think a lot of people are going to be, be really, really happy uh, with the way this pistol turned out. Because, I mean, you can carry it locked and cocked, carry it hammer down, ready to go, double action, safety off, safety on. I mean, it, it's a very versatile pistol, and uh, this will be one of the ones that goes to SHOT Show with us. Uh, so expect to see this thing all sorts of crazy up. Um, next install on these will be for the B6, B6C version of these pistols. And uh, we'll go over some of the things we're going to do for it for SHOT Show. I'll get you guys all the booth number, uh, what SAR USA's booth is going to be. I will be there a couple hours the first two days and probably a couple hours the last day as well. Uh, so if you're going to SHOT, come out. Come see us, come meet, uh, come meet Todd, come meet RJ, come meet me. A uh, really good group of people over at SAR USA to be working with right now. And, uh, we're very appreciative of uh, the combination of us and them. Because these are really nice guns, guys. I keep harping on it in these videos. Don't expect these to stay sub $300 for very long. Uh once people start really getting these in their hands and seeing the quality of the metal, the metal frame pistols that are coming in after the first of the year, in a couple more years, you're not going to be able to touch one of these for under 500 bucks. You're just not. <clears throat> so, you know, it's going to go the same way it went, that Canic went. You know, when they first came in, yeah, you could pick up a Canic for 280 bucks. Most Canics are around 400 and climbing. So, you know, the quality's there. The robustness is there, and honestly, uh, the support from the company for the aftermarket's there. So it's a big deal. Um, but definitely, if you've got a CM9 Gen 2 or Gen 1, you're going to want this kit. Uh, some of the other things we're looking at is possibly a rail clamp-on rail brake. Like an actual brake, instead of uh, attaching to the barrel, it'll attach to the rail. Um, so plus we'll be doing guide rod springs extensions the whole nine yards so it's going to be very entertaining to see what else we can pull off with this thing but for now this i really like this spring kit i really like the pistol uh so if you guys got any questions that's going to wrap everything up if you guys got any questions feel free to email me at tech that's tango echo charlie hotel at gallowayprecision.com be sure to follow us on social media here on YouTube. Like, comment, and subscribe below. Be sure to follow us on Firearms Friendly, Gun Streamer, Full 30, Facebook, Instagram, and Vimeo. And as always, be safe, be accurate, and God bless.